Randy and I gave a presentation on civil integrated management. Uh, it's an acronym that, that I, I coined several years ago when BIM started becoming popular. And you know, the BIM, the, bil the building information model is, is a wonderful tool. Uh, everybody in the office can put together all the mechanicals in a building and design everything from pipe bends to races to where electricity goes and make sure that nothing collides with each other to the point of even assembling uh, complex piping shapes so they're brought on site and installed as opposed to being built. It's wonderful because in a building the only thing obstructing you is air and it won't get in the way. Well, in a civil project, we start to move dirt and find out that utilities are in different places, we encounter hard dig, and the civil information model needs to be fluid. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be changed and it needs to be managed during that change. So civil integrated management is basically a circle of design and production of data. And, and that workflow continues through finding problems or changes in the ground and bringing those back through the circle again. So not only can you effectively make these changes, but it's it's harmonious in the respect that everybody knows what's going on at all times and it just makes it a in lot real easier. time. Um, in in a lot of cases, yes, there are changes that are literally done on the fly that everybody knows about, and there are some that need to go back up the chain and get approved and come back down. And I mean, all all of this has to. You know, as time goes on, I mean, there are very there are a lot of things possible now, and it, it's an improvement over what are considered traditional methods. Uh, but again, this is very much data centric, metadata driven, data centric. Uh, the syncing of that data between disciplines and at what part in the workflow is it? Are you able to feedback and everybody else is updated and uh, you know it's it's. Uh, I guess from a consumer standpoint, it's not unlike uh, uh, the cloud that's that's become so popular and such a big buzzword. Mm -hmm. Really, that's what that technology will certainly lend itself to to what we're doing. So, Marco and I were uh, our audience was primarily land surveyors, and uh, we went through this workflow process. We also discussed the anatomy of machine control. Some of that was was foreign. I mean, some you know land surveyors are traditionally out pounding stakes in the ground and, and that's going away a little at a time and uh, but it but in that in that shift creates more opportunity for the server to to be a positioning expert to to certify what's going on and to actually be at the center of managing that data you know what Marco was and I were trying to show throughout the presentation was new profit center revenue opportunities for these experts. It requires a little change and a little twist in the way they think about yes. what they do. Yes. That's right. And, and, and if the surveyor becomes a conduit, you know, it, 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 it's like an hourglass, it, it, the way we visualize it, is that um, the, the, the contractor and, and, and the civil engineer and the design people and, and the, the, the city all kind of work and make changes and now we've made a decision. And if the surveyor gets that information, that can be channeled through to the field, make sure everyone's got current data. If there's mm -hmm. questions, a surveyor can be part of that and help everybody to facilitate the movement of data, and then it's proper application. You know, it's one thing to know that there's changes coming, but it's another thing to know that everybody knows the changes are there. Right. And it seems to me then that the key is increasingly becoming software. That software drives hardware. And yeah. it used to be that people drove hardware. And now right. more and more we're seeing the software being at the center of the control panel right. yes. and actually driving all these different hardware aspects. And that's another mind shift. True. Again, the True. surveyor is used to pushing the button on that total station and getting in northing and easting and making some decisions about it. But now it's a lot, many times it's software making the decisions about these points. Yes, no, I agree. I mean, even, you know, even self smartphones and cameras, they're all scalable by firmware upgrades. You know, they, they, they architect these systems to, to have a, 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 you know, as much forethought in the design as possible, knowing that, that these upgrades and additional capabilities can even, can, can be upgraded via firmware upgrade. So, I yeah, agree. It's, again, it's all manipulation. I mean, I, I've always preached that no matter what we do, we initially start with the corrected signal at the end of the cable. And how we manipulate that signal is, is what we do. 
So if it's if it's a, a reading from a total station, if it's a corrected GPS location, now we have a location or various locations or our movement through somewhere, and what do we want to do with it? I mean, the, the, the result that we can produce just from that information alone is incredible. I mean, we just talked about GIS applications and, and kind of, you know, cohesive databases, but in, in a simpler application, you're on the site, you have absolutely no information at all, but you can walk anywhere and know exactly what you've got to do. I mean, the, the power is incredible. And, sure it is. you know, it, we just kind of wonder what's going to happen next and what we're going to be able to do with this stuff. I mean, I, I remember years ago people talking about being able to walk onto uh, a raw site uh, that is just, uh, you know, it's existing terrain and view through what now is not uncommon uh, with a simple Android or, or uh, iPhone app with augmented reality and actually view through this, uh, through a viewfinder and camera and see design grade, see holograms of buildings, See, see placements of islands and augment the reality, put it down and there's the raw land. Augmented. That is uh, what seems so far away. Now, it, you know, the technology is really all there. It's a matter of accuracy and it's a matter of all the different pieces playing, integrated together to, to provide that. And the unspoken part is changing the model. Mm -hmm. Changing the way people think. I remember sure. the first time I saw a surveyor bid a job or decide how much he was going to bid on the job by using Google Earth. Right. He didn't go to the job site. The job site was 50 miles away. He pulled it up on Google Earth, got an idea, okay, this is a neighborhood, flat terrain, he knew what to charge. Sure. That was an adoption uh, of new technology. Sure. It's now become very common in the industry, but back then I was, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, remote viewing and, and remote assistance to a job site and everybody talks about uh, equipment health and, and so forth, but what we're looking at is the ability, those on-the-fly changes that have to be made can literally move up and down the chain electronically without anything analog happening. There's no paper, there's no meetings, um, there's a couple emails, there's a file transfer, and there's downloading into, into control boxes and data collectors and everybody's back working. Well, I mean, there, you know, that, that helps two things. It helps production and it helps actors. Yeah. Because everyone is, uh, you know, you're, you're taking out the, the human error. I mean, we have software that if I have a new Surface file and I have a connected site and I want to populate all of the rovers with, with the new model, I can do that in one keystroke. And it's, it happens in the background. The operators uh, and, and rovers are not disturbed by it and I get a track record that this has all happened. So uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's going to get better and better and better and better. Right, I think so.